Welcome back to WWH. My name is Andrew Dreamer. The 1980s were drenched in the blood of teenagers thanks to the slasher boom. It all started in the 70s with films like The Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Black Christmas, but it was John Carpenter's Halloween that really ignited the boom. Suddenly, every other movie seemed to have a masked maniac stalking teenagers. Jason Voorhees became a horror legend, and Freddy Krueger gave us nightmares about falling asleep. These movies weren't exactly Shakespeare, but they were fun in a twisted way. Maybe it was the thrill of the chase, or maybe they just tapped into anxieties about fitting in and bad decisions. Whatever the reason, slasher movies are a permanent fixture in horror history. And they even inspired a whole bunch of future filmmakers. We all know Halloween, Friday the 13th, The Nightmare on Elm Street, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and countless other slasher movies from the time. But what about the slasher movies that didn't get that kind of recognition? The ones that are becoming harder and harder to find because very few people ever saw them. Today, I want to shed some light on these movies. I'm not saying these movies are great by any stretch of the imagination, but I do think each one of them offers something of merit. This isn't really a ranking. It's more of just me wanting to talk about some movies. So I picked six lesser known slashers from the 80s to focus on. A couple honorable mentions, Return to Horror High and Intruder. I actually like both of these movies a lot, but I've talked about them both several times before, so I chose to leave them off the actual list. But with that being said, grab your popcorn and make your way to your seat. Let's head down to the ring. The first film I want to talk about is Blood Harvest. Released in 1987, Blood Harvest is a slasher film with a ridiculous amount of oddball characters. The story follows a college girl named Jill who heads home for a break. Big mistake. Her house is wrecked, her parents are missing, and the whole town seems unusually angry, especially at her family. Things get even weirder when her friends start disappearing and a creepy masked killer is on the prowl. And get this, a wacky clown named Mervo, played by the legendary Tiny Tim himself, is bouncing around adding to all the chaos. Oh. You're happy to see me. People are always happy to see me. Marvelous Mervo at your service. Is he a killer? A creepy sidekick? No one's sure. Blood Harvest is a horror flick with a healthy dose of cheese. Look, this is not a good movie, but I, I still think it's worth a watch. It's got blood, it's got weirdness, and it's got a bizarre small town vibe that will leave you scratching your head. I'll be honest though, the only reason I watched this movie is because of Tiny Tim. I just, I had to see what was going on. And before you ask, yes, he does sing and play his ukulele throughout the movie. Apparently Tiny Tim was making an appearance at a carnival, and the director of this movie just happened to be in attendance. He approached Tiny Tim with the idea for the film, and he agreed to do it. Also, I can't be the only person who immediately thinks of Spongebob when I hear Tiny Tim sing. The next movie on my list is Final Exam. Released in 1981, this slasher injects a dose of terror into the pressure cooker environment of Final Exams. The story unfolds at Lanier College where a group of students are the only ones left on campus due to a fraternity prank gone wrong. <laughs> this looks like a job for... Wild man! They believe they have the deserted school to themselves to cram for their exams, unaware that a real killer, inspired by a recent string of college murders, is stalking the halls. As the body count rises, the remaining students find themselves in a desperate fight for survival. Unlike some slashers that rely heavily on jump scares, Final Exam builds suspense through the isolation of the characters and the constant threat of the unseen killer. The film also throws in a bit of mystery with all the goofiness, keeping the identity of the killer completely hidden until the reveal. So if you're looking for a classic slasher mixed with some National Lampoon style humor, Final Exam might be worth a watch. Next up is going to be Blood Theater. Buckle up for this one. This film, released in 1984, blends slasher horror with dark humor. The story centers around a recently acquired movie theater with a blood-soaked past. A ruthless theater chain owner, ignoring the warnings of his skeptical assistant, sends a group of young employees over to renovate the new place. To incentivize a speedy turnaround, he offers a hefty bonus, fueling some serious competition amongst the crew. But 
Amidst the hammering and cleaning, a more sinister plot unfolds. One by one, the employees fall victim to a mysterious killer. The question is, is it a vengeful spirit tied to the theater's tragic history or a more human threat with a twisted motive? Blood Theater throws in some truly bizarre elements, like the inclusion of a disgruntled concession stand worker with a penchant for bizarre outbursts. The extremely low budget and production value are glaringly obvious, but if nothing else, this film is unique. It's got some decent kills, and I quite like the setting. This is definitely not going to be for everyone though, but I do think that it has just a bit of charm to it. With its intentional humor, unique setting, and questions of the supernatural, just beware of some horrible acting. We're moving on now with Scream. No, not the 1996 Wes Craven movie, but this low budget slasher from 1981. This movie takes a totally different approach to the slasher genre. Instead of teenagers being stalked in their hometown, this scream follows a group of friends on a whitewater rafting trip. Their fun takes a deadly turn when they decide to spend the night in an abandoned ghost town. As darkness descends upon them, they discover they're not alone. A mysterious killer picks them off one by one, leaving the remaining friends to fight for survival and desperately search for a way to escape the desolate town. While not as widely recognized as its 1996 counterpart, the 1981 Scream holds a certain cult appeal for fans of classic slashers. It features the classic tropes of the genre, a remote location, a group of unsuspecting victims, and a brutal killer picking them off one by one. Look, the only reason I'm mentioning this one is its name. There's really nothing special here aside from an interesting location. And a small portion of the score sounds almost Carpenter-like. Oh, and one of the characters is played by one of John Wayne's sons, so I guess that's kind of cool. Other than that, it's got nothing characters, uh, horrible lighting, and subpar kills. But if you're someone who likes slasher movies regardless of the quality, then maybe check it out. The next movie on my list is The Final Terror. Released in 1983, The Final Terror is a slasher film mixed with survival horror. It follows a group of campers who head into the remote wilderness of Northern California. Their carefree weekend takes a dark turn when they stumble upon the territory of a brutal and unseen killer. This isn't your typical summer camp slasher. The campers, played by a cast that includes some familiar faces like a young Daryl Hannah and Joe Pantoliano, who most people probably know as Captain Howard from the Bad Boys franchise. They're not helpless teenagers. They possess wilderness survival skills and fight back against their attacker. What the hell was that? However, their knowledge of the environment is no match for the killer's cunning, and the group is slowly picked off one by one. The final terror faced a rocky road to release, spending a couple years shelved before finally hitting theaters in 1983. Critical reception was mixed, with some praising the film's realistic portrayal of the wilderness and the character's struggle for survival. Others found the pacing slow and the horror elements derivative. Despite its reception, The Final Terror offers a unique blend of slasher tropes and survival horror, making it an interesting watch for fans of the genre, especially for those who enjoy seeing resourceful characters fight back. I actually think this is a pretty good movie. Sure, the production value is lacking a little bit, and you can tell the budget was really small, but this movie is different from most slashers, and I think the reveal at the end was pretty good. It's set up in a way that kind of makes you go, oh yeah, that makes sense, even if it is a little predictable. So to me, this movie is absolutely worth watching. We've got one entry left on this list. But first, we do have to take a short break, so stick around for more WWH action. If you're looking to save 20% from Redcon 1, I have a deal for you. All you have to do is type in code ANDREWDREAMER12 when you're checking out and you will immediately receive 20% off. Also, head over to ProWrestlingTees.com slash ANDREWDREAMER to check out some of my merchandise. And last but not least, head over to Patreon to consider becoming a member of the WWH Universe. There are some pretty cool perks and we would love to have you. All right, we're back. Let's get right to this final film. The last movie on my list is X-Ray. Also known as Hospital Massacre and released in 1981, this slasher flick throws a twist on the genre by placing the terror within the supposedly safe confines of a hospital. The story revolves around Susan Jeremy, a recently divorced woman who arrives for a routine exam. 
However, a dark secret lurks within the hospital walls. A vengeful killer, motivated by a past trauma connected to Susan, dons surgical scrubs and transforms the hospital into a hunting ground. As the body count rises, Susan finds herself trapped in a desperate fight for survival. Panic sets in as Susan realizes she has become the target. The film plays on our primal fear of hospitals, a place where we expect care and safety, being turned into a nightmare. Susan must use her wits and courage to survive the night, all while uncovering the motive behind the killings. X-Ray does have a bit of a cult following these days, but I think it deserves even more. And this is due to its suspenseful atmosphere and exploitation elements. The plot may be a little thin and the acting uneven, but I like the reveal and I like the characters. This is my favorite film on this list, and I do think that you should check this out if you're a fan of slasher movies. I've said before that slashers are my favorite subgenre of horror, so I enjoy looking at movies like these regardless of the quality. Even if the movie's crap, I have fun picking it apart. I do think that each of the films I talked about at least have some merit despite the varying quality, but that is going to wrap up this video. If you enjoyed this look at some lesser known slashers from the 80s, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you never miss any of the action here at WWH. And remember, in the squared circle of horror, there's no count out for nightmares. My name is Andrew Dreamer, and this is Wrestling With Horror.